Hi everyone, thanks for coming. Uh, my name is Tom Catalini and uh, this ambiguously or vaguely titled talk is Tom's best WordPress tips for blogging. And uh, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself just to put that into context. Um, I've been in the IT field for uh, over 20 years, everything from uh, the help desk up to the executive level. So I've always been pretty technical, pretty involved in technology and all the projects I've run uh, you know, usually have some sort of human element that is what is the difference between success and failure. And as technology has emerged over the years and over the decades for me, I've always been most interested in kind of what's leading, what's out front, and that's been many different things over the years. And in recent years, it's all had to do with social media, blogging, and, and things along those lines. And that's what has drawn me to that realm. Uh, to the extent I started spending a lot of energy and time in that space, um, and uh, I ended up over at the university this last semester teaching a course on e-marketing. Uh, and that was really about the strategic application of some of this uh, for different business case studies and, and uh, so on and so forth. So that's a little bit of a context about who I am. I'm here today to talk to you about blogging with WordPress uh, because for the last two, two and a half years, I've spent a lot of time with it. And I've done it from three different perspectives. So uh, back in 06, uh, my book was published uh, called Road Biking Massachusetts. And uh, so one of my hobbies is cycling. And you know, if you have a hobby and you're interested to share some information, the internet's a great place to do that, right? And that's what leads us to this wonderful world of blogging. So I started that you know, six or seven years ago on a platform called Blogger, which was one of the first uh, platforms that made this stuff less technical and more easy to publish. So even though my background's in technology and I'm a fairly technical guy, my uh, interest in blogging and on this platform was more about writing and communicating and I ultimately was drawn to WordPress because I'm relieved of a lot of the technical responsibilities that I had in my day job that I could go and sort of focus on the content on the WordPress platform. That being said, Everything I'm talking about today, the sites I'm going to tell you about are all on wordpress.org. Is everybody familiar with the difference between wordpress.com and wordpress.org? Uh, there's a little bit more back-end management with this, but you have more freedom to do what you want to do. There's a lot of resources here to learn more about that. So I started out with this biking site, uh, was on blog, I converted it over to WordPress and started to learn how to customize and engage an audience on this platform. I'm also pretty active in, a, uh, in an IT executive uh, professional association of Boston area called the Society for Information Management. And you know, before long, I ended up helping out with the website there. It was another, it was on some arcane technology. And, and again, I thought WordPress would be a great place uh, to, to make move this because it's uh, free, cheap, and easy to do that. It was another opportunity for me to learn about the platform and come at it from a different angle. We just heard in the last session, you know, the WordPress is virtually unlimited in terms of what you can do from a content management system or blog or any of these other platforms. So I went from more of a sort of blog realm in the, on the biking side to uh, more of kind of a content management system type application. And then a couple of years ago, I started blogging on what I consider kind of my primary uh, property on the internet right now, TomCatalini.com. And that's really just the place where I started out by you know, sharing what I knew about WordPress. I have a whole series uh, that may be of interest to some people. Some of this is probably a little bit out of date about the website 101 thing it talks about installing and getting up to speed on WordPress so that might be useful to some folks. And then I went on to really just sort of see what I had to say about other things and have some musings on there. So I'm just going to kind of talk about my best tips, you know, there's six or eight or ten thoughts that came to mind. What would I tell somebody just starting out today on WordPress.org? Why might I encourage them to get on this platform? What are the things I would share? So that's the agenda. Uh, it's going to hit. It's going to cover things like permalinks and using photos, which I'm pretty uh, interested in. Uh, talk about writing style and some of these other things. So I'm going to talk in the WordPress realm. I'm going to cite some references well outside of the WordPress realm and go from there. And anytime, if anybody wants to jump in, if you have something to share, this is a community uh, with a lot of knowledge and experience in the room, so if uh, you think I'm outright wrong on something, or if you have another tip to share, please speak up. We do have a microphone we're trying to manage in the room. It's right in the middle here. And Lily, I think, will be happy to run around in circles. I'm sorry, it's not Lily. OK, oh, we have our first question. 
but I really like the idea of having something that matches to help get the, the gist of the uh, post across and help draw your attention in. So, how do we do this? Um, did I go to a bike race and plant a seed and go to a trapeze show? No. <laughs> There's something wonderful out there known as Creative Commons, right? So where do we get all this stuff for free? Uh, are folks familiar with Creative Commons at all in the room? Can somebody offer a sample, a sort of description of what Creative Commons is in 30 seconds or less? Right over here on the side, and we'll, we'll sort of get a sense of um, how this is going to help us. A copyrighted material that you have designated that you are willing to share in various ways. Yes, absolutely. So, where I go, I ended up in Flickr. And there's millions or billions of photos up there that people post, post as a photo sharing site. And they can assign a license to their work. And right here, if we go to Creative, uh, go to Flickr, and we go to Explore Creative Commons, it lays out quite nicely. And there's like three more licenses after this. So you have to do a little bit of homework and a little bit of reading. But the one up top basically lets you do everything as long as you provide attribution to the original creator of the content. And I'm going to show you how to do that in WordPress in a minute. What well, we can see right up there, under that most forgiving attribution license, which allows us to edit it and tweak it and do some other things, there's 34 million photos available to us. So it's pretty easy, once you get used to it, to go dig in there and figure out how to find something that matches your blog post. Um, and here's one example I want to share, though. You've got to spend a little bit of time getting comfortable in that realm. So if we search for happy face, we're going to get things that maybe don't jive with what we're trying to, the, 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 the tone we're trying to set. So you, you'll learn over time that, you know, searching for the word excited and finding this girl that's excited, that's sort of the face I was looking for for that particular post. So there's a little bit of trial and error, there's a little bit of working to, uh, uh, you know, get used to that. But once you get used to it, you can actually do it pretty quickly. Now when it comes time to uh, in, in install this uh, photo, there's image on your blog post, we're going to go back into WordPress, and we're going to write in your, um, when you edit or create a post, you can up, there's a button and hit to upload a photo. So the first thing we're going to do is download it off of Twitter, put it on your hard drive, and we're going to upload it back into the uh, gallery in WordPress. You can link to it, but I've had a couple of them disappear, so the person that with the Twitter account shuts that down and takes that photo off, it's, it's gone, and you lose that. So I've become much more of a fan of downloading it and uploading it into WordPress, do that very easily. You can see we've got it set to a line to the left so that the text wraps around this nicely and it's part of the post rather than having a photo and something else. Again, I'm sort of focused on drawing the, the reader in. And there's a couple of tweaks I like to do is just give this a little bit of breathing room so that the text isn't right up against that. That kind of defeats the purpose, in my opinion, of bringing something in that's engaging and having it all flow well together. So I usually throw five or ten pixels uh, up front. And here's the post live on the site, and you can see down the bottom, here's what I do. You need to provide some kind of attribution to the original author. So I simply put photo credit, which is the name uh, that this person chose to post on Flickr under. And then that hyperlink goes back to Flickr and can show you the photo where that came from. So that's just, you know, that's your responsibility as a blogger. And, and you're getting all this content for free at the Creative Commons, uh, but you have to be respectful and adhere to the license. While we're on this post, uh, I, if we look down a little bit further, sharing is another thing that I think I would encourage folks to, who are getting into blogging to do right away. So we're creating a space for ourselves on the web. We're sharing all kinds of great ideas. Uh, we want people, you know, lo and behold, when somebody comes by and they see something they want to share with their friends, we want to make that easy. There's a number of plugins that uh, this, this mic keeps chopping up. Is this one any better? Anyway, I don't know why I keep doing that, I'm sorry. So, um, with sharing, we'll, we want to make it easy to, for people to, to share this wonderful content we've created. And over the years, I've used different widgets and plugins to do that. Right now, the Jetpack plugin, and I don't know if anybody has come across this yet, but that's one you want. It's, it's put out by automatic at basically wordpress.com. You want to download and install that. It's got a bunch of good stuff. I'm going to talk about a couple of things in here. But the sharing widget, I can just 
simply decide which networks I want to share on and drag and drop these buttons and they show up in the post. It's nicely integrated, simple, easy to do. Uh, and I would encourage you to do that. Another thing that comes with Jetpack is the ability to get statistics upon your site. So once you've got your content, you've got your site set up, and you've got engaging photos and people are sharing it, you want to kind of pay attention to what's happening out there. And I, there's Google Analytics and there's all kinds of crazy stuff you can do with analytics. A nice, simple, easy way is that with Jetpack is to, is to activate the stats program. And here's a couple of the different sites. I think the top one is the Boston Sim website where we can see a pattern where uh, you know, the, the IT executives aren't looking for a lot of information on this on Saturday and Sunday. But uh, during the week, there's more interest in the site, and we we announce uh, some kind of event or email, we can see spikes in the pattern. And the one down below is uh, my road biking site, which has sort of steady interest over time. And I can learn things like, you know, it's pretty seasonal, the interest in that content. Uh, in the middle of the winter, there's not a lot of interest in there. But we can dig down a little bit further and very easily, right on our WordPress dashboard, learn even more information. So this looks like the road biking site. And we can see that uh, you know, a lot of the referrals are coming in through search engines. So this data is 102 views on the page. Uh, most of them are coming through search engines. And we can see that there's a lot of interest in biking clubs. This is interesting to me for a couple of reasons because I really stopped contributing content to the question over here. I really stopped creating new content for uh, this site on a regular basis a long time ago, but it still gets a lot of traffic. Um, Basically, because it, it's in search engines, and a lot of people are searching, particularly seasonally, up for bike clubs in Massachusetts. Um, so, does this um, dashboard, the thing that we're viewing here on the uh, screen, does it views means it could well it could mean pre-existing visitors to your website, as well as unique visitors? So, does it tell you if there's unique visitors? I have not newbies. I've not seen that on this. So I, I also set up. Google Analytics, so if I want to get deeper, that's where I go. I've just found it handy to have an overview, so I actually use them both. Okay. And if I want to do that, that level of work, I'll go to Google Analytics. And they're not always in agreement, so you have to take you know, some of this with a grain of salt. Somebody more knowledgeable about the, uh, the analytics would probably get to take better than me on that. But I just, I'm trying to, you know, I'm really saying, you know, these are the sort of the top things I would tell people, you know, look, set this up, let it run. Maybe nobody's coming in the beginning, but over time you will get a sense. And these three sites I've been managing, it's interestingly very, very different. And we can get down even further on this site and we can see, you know, what the search terms are that people are coming in under. So Road Bike in Massachusetts, you know, those ones at the top, they probably already know about me the bulk of the site. Some of the other ones are a little bit more interesting because they're people that are just looking for a bike club in the Boston area or something along those lines. What it'll also tell me is when people are clicking off of the site. So, uh, like most of you, you know, I write a blog post and I link off to something else. And there we go. Are we done? Oh, stop. Should we just turn this mic on? Um, so this will tell us. Um, that links off the site, and this on this site that's sort of interesting to me because I'm set up as an Amazon affiliate, and so if somebody puts over to Amazon from here, uh, you know, there's a chance I could make uh, 50 cents on the transaction if they buy a copy of the book. Which would be the same thing for any of you considering writing a book. I think I make more money as an Amazon affiliate than I do as an author when this transaction happens this way. So, uh, but I, I did that for more in the love of cycling and, and an interest in writing than uh, than as a money maker. Okay. So to do this, this is again part of the Jetpack plugin that's uh, available for free. I think you just have to do some, a little bit of setup. And you do have to have a WordPress.com account to manage this. So that's the link to get to the stats and some of the information. So, you know, if you, again, another good reason why you need to start on like WordPress.com if you want from there. Uh, Twitter is a little bit different. You know, we can share things out there. Okay. Hello, hello, hello. Um, so I like this idea of making your content shareable, but I also, uh, with Twitter in particular, I like the idea of if I publish a blog post, it just automatically shows up on my Twitter account. And uh, I, 
I've used different plugins for this over the years, but uh, this one I like right now is the WP Tweet button. It's a couple things you can play around with the position in terms of where it shows up on your post, so I'm just playing around with it. I think on some of them I have the, the Tweet button show up before the post and the rest of the sharing buttons down below. You can have it show up on your RSS feeds, things like that. And I can determine that I want to auto-tweet the post when it is created and have some other options there. So I find that just really a simple, easy concept to implement. I you know, play with different plugins. Somebody else might have tips on other ones to consider. This one's working for me right now, so I use that. So now uh, I wanted to mention something about inviting people to subscribe to your blog or your web property. Because we've got some great content, people are sharing it, and maybe they're interested to the level where they want to make a stronger commitment to you, and they want to be in the loop any time that you create something because it's, uh, it's potentially uh, wonderful stuff. Is, do folks in here, just by a show of hands, do you subscribe to blogs or websites through RSS? Okay. So. I like that as a consumer as well. I can get all my stuff in one place and I can uh, participate in a lot of properties and it's very easy to do. So we want to offer that to people on our blog. That's built into WordPress. What I want to talk about here is maybe doing that over email and integrating it with FeedBurner. Is anybody familiar with FeedBurner? About a third of the audience there. Okay. So, and there's reasons why you want to do that. So, on, uh, this is on my TomCatalini.com property. I've got an email address form in there, and I've played around some different techniques here. This is on the Genesis theme that I use. This is a, a built-in widget that I can just drag over there. It's pretty easy to set up and integrate with uh, Feedburner. On the right, on the biking site, I've been playing around with this uh, WP Super pop up which is the thing where you put the one of the first five times you visit, well, on the first five times you visit the site, it just puts a pop-up in your face and asks for your email address. So it's a, it's, it's a little bit more intrusive. So the one on the left is a little bit more subtle way to solicit subscriptions, and the other one's a little bit more in your face. What I did is I tested this across two of the sites, and on one of them, the, the pop-up thing was pretty annoying to people. I get some feedback in that regard. And on the Viking one, it doesn't seem to bother anybody, and my email subscriptions keep going up. So you, know, you need to experiment with that. But the idea of just sort of providing a vehicle where it's people, easy for people to subscribe. And there's a certain, I feel, stronger commitment if somebody's willing to give you their email address, and I would encourage you to provide that and promote that as an, as an option. Yes? Where is actually for the email subscriber? Uh, on your blog, because I have two blogs, and uh, this week one of the one of the people who read one of my blogs, they couldn't find the email subscriber on my blog. It's, it's like lower down on the right side of the. So the one on the left, I have on the upper right, and it's, I feel that that's a prominent but sort of understated place to put it. At least it's right there, and people see it. Uh, on the biking one, I have that, but I also have this pop up coming, so you really can't miss it. Yeah. So well, yeah, I really don't like pop ups. So I don't like. Yeah, but I, but I, what was fascinating, I don't like them either, but I tried this, and one audience did not like them clearly, and the other one just didn't seem to mind, so, um, you know, it seems to be working to my advantage, and we've got some other clients along those lines, so other people have advice. Uh, did that email pop-up register, I'm sorry, not the pop-up, the email registration box, if you're there, is that part of a plugin, or is that uh... Yes, it's a plugin, so, and that's it right there, WP Super Pop-Up. The pop up on the right, but also the option on the left? Or the option on the left, if you're going to put a uh, feed burner into your site, it sort of depends what's happening with your theme. I've got this Genesis theme, which had a widget built in to do that. You can also get a code snippet from feed burner. You can find plugins to do it. So it sort of depends, you know, what your platform is. Yeah. Got a comment right behind you. Maybe that's the answer. No, I read like a ton of blogs. That's actually how I learned this, by being an end user looking at what they do. Yeah, you would be both. So I, I know this case. So, so a couple things. If you have a pop-up, some of these pop-ups have music. It's annoying. Don't do it. Also, please, please, please give people a choice of both email and a cloud-based RSS feed reader like FeedBurner or FeedBlitz, not one or the other. Email is not dead. It only has a 5% open rate. 50% of the people on your email list will not necessarily 
answer the call to action, but they are interested in your content. But I, if I have to write one more blogger about, you know, do this or do that, I'm going to lose you, my mind. What do you find? Because I have found some, some, a trend recently where they will provide a way to subscribe by email, but not traditional RSS. Well, in, in the beginning, about five years ago, it was RSS, but it wasn't cloud-based, so you had to be sitting at that computer at your work. Oh, that which was very point. limiting, and even t social media blogs, which I, that's my space. I'm like, you're not using a cloud base. Like, how can you sit there and say you're an expert on social media and not know about the cloud? So some of that has to do with your reader. So I use Google Reader. If you have a Gmail account, and if you don't have them, you should. If you do, you have a Google Reader account, and that's a good cloud-based reader for RSS. And so here's some of the information you'll get from FeedBurner as a user, you can see. Uh, more information about who's clicking on what, how many people are opening and reading what you're sharing. And this is what I was talking about before. This is actually on the old, old framework I used to use, thesis theme. Uh, there's a little bit of configuration in converting. You know, WordPress is, has a built-in RSS function. You're trying to stick FeedBurner in the middle of that, and there's a little bit of translation that has to happen. So again, this will depend, you know, this is just an example screen of configuration changes, but this will depend a lot on your so, it's 11.30, uh, we have about 15 minutes left. I want to make sure I leave plenty of time for uh, more Q&A. But I wanted to mention, just talk a little bit about writing and blogging. So again, I'm a little bit off the WordPress map here. But in my experience, uh, like yours, is sort of reading a lot of blogs and paying attention to stuff, experimenting in some different, with some different properties out there. I've definitely found that there's, there's sort of a, a good way to write, in my opinion for uh, the website. If you look at any of my stuff, it's sort of short, punchy to the point I don't like, I don't write a lot of long research-oriented stuff. I try and break it up with images. I try and put you know, subtitles in there. Everything I want to do is make it inviting for somebody to read, and then I want to make it easy for somebody to read. Move the microphone over there, we have a comment. Um, so don't bury the lead you know, on, on the web. Nobody has time. It's uh, the same gentleman right up here. Uh, so say what you got to say, um, and then uh, and then support it. Use a conversational tone. There's a, there's a sentiment that I agree with. Which is right like speak. You know, we can we can be brief, uh, break things up visually, like we talked about. Vary your sentence script, and don't get too hung up on grammar. This is sort of an informal tone that I have found that works best on the, all these sites, and then that's actually helped me improve my writing in uh, more professional environments as well. I, I would also say, write with specificity and directness. Keep Very it direct. Keep it 120 characters or less, because if you want it to be retweeted, Twitter's 140, so you have to leave room for the tweet. Right. So don't front load. I, I don't like the death by PowerPoint thing, like we experienced in the other room. So I like it when there's like a topic sentence you know, a highlight, like maybe a couple sentences, and it's hyperlinked, not the whole article. Yeah. Because it's just, I'll, I'll tell you, I was used to be a teacher, it's just too much data dump. I mean, it's just, it's visual overload, and it looks bad. And also, just, if you're going to do social media, think about where your customers already are before you decide where you want to post, because you're not going to move them. I mean, Moses really has to go to, you know, get them to the mountain. If yes. they're already, you know, in Facebook, that's where you concentrate your efforts. Yeah, all right. I agree with all of that. Here's my favorite book on writing style. So I got a little bit off the map right back, and I read this actually on paper and got it at the bookstore. And uh, uh, Chip and Dan Heap, Made to Stick, awesome book. It kind of has a marketing spin to it, but it's useful for lots of different types of writing. And that really helps you think through, and they give you some good comparisons and a great model to develop your writing style. Hi, are, are you selling any products on your blogs? You mentioned Pat Flynn. Pat Flynn sells a lot. He does. He makes about thirty thousand dollars a month off this blog. He does. So, what is your, what is your, how do you approach that on your different websites? Yeah, I'm not selling anything. I don't have any products, or I don't do any consulting or anything like that. Mike. Oh. My blog, uh, what I consider my main blog, is my just forum to share my ideas with the world and really nothing else uh, than that. The biking blog, when I set it up in 06, I thought that might end up being a big community and maybe I'd sell some things through that. I did go through the affiliate program with uh, Amazon. I actually at one point took on sponsored ads and you know figured out a model for that, but it's just not really, it's not going to work my time and I don't have uh, 
uh, enough interest to do that. I mean, if you, you know, for those of you that are spending time in space, you know, a few people like Pat Flynn actually talk about needing to have a passion and an interest in what you're doing. So if there's a magic formula and you can figure it out and just do a lot of hard work and make some money online, that's probably not even enough. He would tell you, and I would agree, uh, whatever you're doing, you have to be interested in it. And as my teachers just sort of waned and cycling, maybe because I'm older, slower, you know, more overweight, and I'm not sort of racing like the old days. <laughs> You know, um, I spend less time on that blog, but I keep it up because uh, it's a couple thousand views a month for people looking for bike clubs and different information and some of the articles for sort of time. So, you know, why not? So I'm not the guy to talk to about monetizing the web. But I'm sure there are other people here. Uh, but for whatever you're doing, to organize and customize it, you know, I, I have spent some time with that on all of these sites. That's my main blog. I'm big into the images and the photos, so I ended up uh, spending a few bucks to get a theme, and this is a child theme of that, a Genesis theme that supports that in a way that I liked. Again, I don't want to get into a lot of coding or customization, so that works well. Uh, there's a lot of more information from better people here about themes and WordPress, but I would you know, consider customizing the, the 2011, 2012, whatever you started up with, or playing around with other ones. And they're getting better all the time. Even the default theme that comes with WordPress is better all the time. This is actually, I think, the 2011 theme on my Viking website. And all I did, that's a photo I took uh, when I was doing research for the book. And I just, you know, cropped it up to the size of whatever fit in the header, put it up there, and I did very little customization. But, you know, I'm happy with it. It seems to do well. Um, the Boston chapter of the Society for Information Management, we are one of 35 chapters nationally. So uh, it was fun to play around with WordPress for a while and, and think about what we wanted to do. But sooner or later, I had to get it to match the, uh, the national site. And um, again, this is, this is a free theme that sort of looked close enough to the site. And I figured out how to copy the colors and put some graphics and move that over. Very easy to do. I'm going to do an technical on these things. And this is the one I just paid a few bucks because that was the easiest way to get you know, something I was happy with. Uh, yeah, I may even change that later this fall, but once a year I find I just sort of interested to kind of see what's out there, experiment, and see what happens. Uh, it's a little bit lower risk for me. I'm not trying to monetize or you know, serve a tremendous audience. So, um, Along those lines, I do uh, also advise people when they're starting out to think about your categorization and the menu structure. You know, it's a, the traditional blog, it's, it's just reverse chronological order, post after post. If you put some categories to your post. It's very easy to organize a menu system. And we can see on my menu system here, I have one menu item that goes to a page, and the rest are just categories. And so I you know, generally write in these things. I'm reviewing a book, I'm talking about leadership, communication, whatever, social media. And if I categorize those things, I automatically have a menu system built in. It's just a, a nice way if somebody to come in and not only just see the post that's in the front, but they can also browse around and quickly see uh, what else. I might have to offer. And I, the link to the page, uh, I just want to spend two seconds on this about the contact. Uh, somewhere out there, I saw this idea, I liked it, I've implemented it for a while, but having the about me page, so first of all, I say David Newman Scott, he's a uh, Boston area guy, he's pretty prominent in the social media space. He just did a post on this this week, like, what is it about, like, put an about page out there so that people have some context, they know who they're reading, where you're coming from, kind of like the intro I did at the beginning of the, of the talk, so you have a sense, and people will go there. And I have merged, I've cropped this a little bit so it'll fit on the slide. But I, I read another idea that I agree with is to have a contact page integrated with this, it's not two places for people to go. Did you have another comment? I wanted to say, please, please, if you're using this as a website, put in a site map. There's like every, every website should have a site map, so besides the categories, because you might have subcategories or subtopics of conversation, please don't make every someone click all over your, I am one of those people that will click like 20 times, yeah. but I'm, I'm, I know I'm definitely in like the minority. So yeah. Minority meaning like less than 5%. Yeah, you may be disappointed if you visit my site, but um, there is a plug-in for Google Site Map that it was a webmaster tool that I configured at some point, I can't remember what it is, that helps Google understand and do that growing because I'm more interested, no offense, in having Google do that so I'm definitely well represented in the search engines than for, um, than for me personally as well as doing for end users. Uh, post ideas and scheduling, I just got the five minute sign. This is my best writing tip, carry a notebook and pen 
Uh, when you have an idea, jot it down. When you come back to it later, if I got an idea as part of this conversation, by the time I get to the lunch break or back to my car, I probably have forgotten it if I jot it down real quick. Um, so I've learned a lot about sort of being a writer through this process. Carrying a notebook around helps. The other thing that helps is building a habit of writing. Last summer, I just gave myself a little challenge. I'm going to post every day. Then I, I backed it off to at least five days a week and just building that exercise of writing. And even if you're building a web property and you don't think anybody's out there, you should be doing that for yourself anyway just to develop and hone your skills. And the other big thing is get used to editing your own work. So you may want to start in Notepad, Google Docs, and write your post and then look at it again. And then I put it into WordPress and I look at it again. And then I use Preview and I look at it again and make sure, um, and, and, make, and ideally set, put some time between the time you do that so that you get a sense of your mistakes. And I do that uh, religiously every time. You know, the very last post I wrote this week, <laughs> Somebody pointed out a typo as soon as I published it and I can fix it. You know, so as much as I like to try and do that, I've seen Seth Godin do it too. He gets you know, a million visitors a month and I think the stakes are much higher for him. So uh, he can do it once in a while, so can I, I guess. But getting used to editing your own work is really helps you form your own personal writing style, I have found. Um, I'm going to point you one more research, resource. We don't have much time to go. But when I think about writing and creating content, particularly for monetization or business aspect, Six Pixels of Separation is Mitch Joel's podcast. It's a great, if you're into the social media marketing space, it's a great thing to listen to. This came up last Christmas. I used it as a resource in my new marketing course at Bethlehem University. It was one of the best things I thought I could share with the students, and I got a lot out of it. It's a great discussion on um, how to think about creating content, and then if you're in an organization, how to build a culture of creating content. A lot of great ideas. And this guy, Marcus Sheridan, is a hoot. He's got a great way of expressing a lot of complex stuff uh, very simply and concisely. So I would suggest you to, to read that as well. And one of the other last tip I have here is on uh, saving a draft and scheduling. When you sit down at WordPress, you don't have to hit publish all the time. You can save a draft, come back to it later. You can also schedule it for the future. So sometimes I might write a post in the evening and schedule it to go out in the morning because I think that's better, you know, more consistent time to hit. Or, the time I want it to go on Twitter or whatever. And the last thing I guess is the community. So we're sitting right in the middle of the WordPress community here. WordCamp is an awesome resource for this. We've got folks who come at this from all kinds of angles, participate in the community. You're doing that already. There's also, if, you're, if you live in the Boston area, there's a monthly WordPress meetup over at the Nerd Center that is just, it, it's like a mini WordCamp once a month. I totally encourage you to attend and also there's tons of online resources. So we don't have much time. I'm, you know, I'm standing between you and lunch now, uh, but I'm happy to stick around and answer any questions you might have. We've got one right, right behind you. Hey, I just have a couple comments on the Jetpack stuff. Yeah. And I